Hi. So last night I sent you a video, and in that video I briefly showed this fritzing circuit, this design for um, the, the breadboard version of the Christmas tree. And um, then this morning I actually built this live and recorded it, but unfortunately all the software went completely wrong, uh, and I'm doing it again. So what happened was that this morning uh, I built this, which actually I think looks a little bit neater than that. And then when I went to build it, as you'll see in the last video, uh, I actually simplified it. This doesn't look quite so neat, um, but it's simpler. It's got less bits of wires uh, and so forth, and you will see that later. So uh, let's um, let's leave all three of these and start a new fritzing sketch. And here's the breadboard. And let's just have a quick look at this diagram, uh, which you will see from the instructions of the Christmas tree. And this is what we're going to build on the breadboard. On the Christmas tree you've got two of these, but they're exactly the same. And the only difference between this and what we're going to build is this one's got four LEDs on each side, and we're only going to have two LEDs on each side, because it's quicker to build that way. So what we've got here <coughs> is some LEDs with a resistor, that's the famous resistor that you always use with LEDs to stop the blue smoke coming out. And up here is the positive terminal of the battery, and down here is the negative terminal of the battery. And here is the transistor, which is basically used as a switch. You can think of this as an on-off switch. And if it's switched on, the electricity will flow and the LEDs will glow. And if it's switched off, the electricity won't flow and the LEDs uh, won't glow. And then you've got this timing circuit in here. Uh, think of this as like a rainwater barrel and it fills up. And if it's quite a big rainwater barrel, it'll take longer to fill up. And this resistance is like a kink in the hose to stop the water flowing. So if you've got a very high resistance, that will also take longer for the rainwater barrel to, to fill up. And what happens is that when the rainwater barrel is full up, it switches the other switch. So when one circuit is running, one switch is on, these, this crossover here makes sure that the other one is switched off until its charging circuit um, gets full, the, the barrel gets full and then it switches the other way um, and the barrel empties and the switch switches and hey presto, those lights come on and then these lights come on. So that's what we're trying to achieve here. We've got the LED circuit with a switch, LED circuit with a switch, and we've got the timing circuit, which is crossed over so that the timing circuit switches the switch. And it says here BC547, but you'll remember, Gabriel, that when we went to Skycraft, we bought um, two N222s, which are the same thing. And these are uh, NPN transistors. When you look at a transistor diagram, it's either got the little arrow pointing in or the little arrow pointing out. And if it's pointing out, it's NPN, and if it's pointing in, it's PNP. And the difference between them is way too uh, complicated for us to worry about at this stage of learning about electronics. Um, and the little arrow is always called the emitter, and the big bar in the middle is always called the base, and the little line without anything on it is always called the collector. So emitter, base, collector. So <coughs> the first thing we're going to do is get out some components. And we need two LEDs on one side and two more LEDs on the other side. Uh, and I find it's much easier if the positive side is facing to the left. So I'm going to mark them all, come down to flip, and no pressure, they all flip over. So I'll take two of those over to the other side, and I'll leave those two there. So that's our two transistors. Um, 
each transistor is going to need a resistor, we're just going to rotate that so that it's vertical, so that it's in the right uh, direction. And these are, I think I've used 100 ohm. So I will come down here and select the down arrow and select 100 ohm. And the color changes to brown, black, brown. And I go right click, duplicate. And now I've got one for over there and one for over there. Then we need the switches, which are PNP, uh, uh, NPN transistors. And there's a PNP. If you look down here when I put the mouse up, you see it says PNP. And in that one, in the middle picture, the diagram, you can see the arrows pointing towards the base, whereas the NPN, the arrows pointing away from the base. And we need two of those. I'll put one over there, and we'll put one over here, and you'll see that it also says EBC, which means that's emitter. In fact, if we hover, it says we've got E emitter, hover here, B base, hover there, C collector. And on your ones, um, they're little metal cans, aren't they, with a little tab, and the little tab that sticks out is close to the emitter, so you know which is the emitter. Uh, what else do we need? We need uh, the timing circuit, which consists of an electrolytic capacitor. And again, I found the circuit works better if the negative side is on the right. And we need two of those, so we'll duplicate that and put another one over there. And they also need uh, resistors, so we will have resistors and we will duplicate them before we put the values in because the values are different. And this one is 82k. Scroll down. Oh, it hasn't got 82k on here, but we can type it in, I think. 82k. Enter. And uh, 8, 2 and 3 zeros. So yeah, that's right. And this one is 100k. Uh, and I think that is in there, and 100 ohms, oh, and we'll get there, uh, 100k, which is, yeah, good. Okay, <coughs> so let's uh, place them where they're going to go, and I want to start off with the LEDs. If we come back and look at the diagram here, um, on this symbol of an LED, the line is the negative and the top of the triangle is the positive. So we've got resistor up on the positive. Oh, I've just realised we're missing a really key component, which is the battery. And that would be easier if it was facing in the right direction. So we'll turn it over. And the battery is going to connect. We're going to connect the positive side of the battery to there and the negative side of the battery to there. Good. <coughs> so this resistor is connected to the positive and then I'm going to stick one LED in there and one LED in there and I'm going to just connect them up like that. So now the electricity is coming along this positive line through the resistor into the positive side of that LED out of the negative side around there positive side of that LED oops, down there. So, uh, having worked that out quite nicely, let's do the same on the other side. And it's good not to put them too close. And then we just connect across there. And we connect across there. So if we go back and look at this diagram, we've now done down to there and down to there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the transistor and 
emitter base collector, it says down here, EBC. And if we hover here, it should say emitter. And if we look at the diagram, the emitter goes straight down to ground. So all we have to do is to connect across there. And let's put in the other one. And connect down to ground. Good. What's next? Well, if we come back to the diagram, the, the negative side of the LEDs goes to the collector and it also goes to, this, to the positive side of this capacitor. So let's take this capacitor and pop it in like there. And if we connect across to there, there we go, it going to the positive side of the capacitor. And emitter base collector, we can just do that. Job done. Uh, and we could do the same on this side. We could pop this in here. And we can connect this to there and down to there. <coughs> so go back to the diagram, we've now done that and that. Now the negative side of both of these electrolytic capacitors goes through their resistors up to the positive line. So we can pull one resistor in there and uh, one resistor in there and that just goes like that and like that. So I'll just check that again. Yeah, it goes up there. But the other thing is it goes to the base of the other transistor. So we need to go from here to the base of the other transistor and from there the base of the other transistor and that's why let's move that out for a moment that's why I prefer to put that there it's easier to see oh, what's going on and that's the whole thing and these needn't have been quite so far away but that's just how it came out uh, when I was drawing it so that's it um, I'll file this as Fritzing 4 and I'll so send you all of these so that you can have a look at them and see that electrically they are the same even if they're, the layout physically looks different. Um, it does draw schematics but it's kind of a mess when you start off and when you hit auto route it's supposed to sort it all out neatly but I've only just started using fritzing and you'll see when this is finished that clearly there's something that I don't understand but I'll just let you see what it does. I also started off by trying to do the schematic first and have it produce the breadboard and that was an even worse mess um, but I'm sure that this does work nicely. It's just that I haven't learnt how to make it work nicely because that doesn't really look terribly nice to me. But that's something that I've got to work on. So that's it. That's the whole of the fritzing thing.